Ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. Alright, let's do this. We're back, boys and girls, with another episode of the Not So Fucking Ordinary Show. If you're new to the show, my name's TJ Haig. Taking the time to interview extraordinary people like my man, D. McCash. My man. How you doing, brother? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Man, I'm excited for this one. You and I have known each other for, what, 28, 29, 30 years, pretty much our entire lives, right? About, about that. About yeah, man. That. So it's funny how things come full circle. I know, But right? here we are. Um... Before we get into who this man is, I need a shout out to the show sponsor, Fit to Give. Fit to Give provides high quality stainless steel shakers. You can check us out at fittogive.org. And what's special to me is that we're pushing a portion of the proceeds to three different charities that support higher quality water, nutrition, and education. So check it out, folks, fittogive.org. And this is our beautiful model. <laughs> all right my man let's jump into this let's do it yeah i really appreciate you being on the show i'm excited because i usually take the time to interview people in business they're entrepreneurs they have extraordinary mindsets they're real estate investors and you just check the box on all those i'm trying to so let's dive into it my man when someone asks you what do you do how do you explain that uh i mean first and foremost i'm a father that's that's the most important thing to me. Other than that, I'm a, I'm a businessman. Whether it comes to music, um, any type of business, I'm a businessman. I'm an investor. Um, anything that brings money, really. My name is Dima Cash. <laughs> there you go. You know? I like it. Let's start off with your music career because I think that's fascinating. Tell me about, or not tell me because I know. Tell the folks watching and listening, you know, what you do from a music standpoint. Uh, musically, I've been doing music since I was about 17, so about 13 years now. Um, I've been on tour around the United States with Bone Thugs and Harmony. I've been on tour in Japan. Um, I perform with legends, um, 2 Chains, T.I., um, g Easy, MGK, Post Malone, etc., etc. The list goes on. And I also have a record label. I have a clothing line that's all related to my music as well. And just just at the end of the day, just doing what I love. I love music. Where can people find you? I don't want to forget to ask that question. So everyone that's like, holy shit, this guy's performed with all those legends. Who is this kid? Uh, you can find me anywhere, really. Uh, I have a website. I'm on iTunes, on Spotify, on Every every music streaming site you can think of, you could literally just Google me, Dima Cash, D I M A K A S H. There we go. There we go. So how'd you get into hip hop? Uh, honestly, uh, when we started, it was just a bunch of buddies um, just doing it for fun as a hobby, and uh, doing music was a getaway, and we took it to the next level. When I got offered to buy into a studio. We bought into the studio, and that's when music actually became for real. You know what I mean? It wasn't mm -hmm. a hobby anymore. Now we got to pay the bills. Now, yeah, yeah, now exactly. we got a studio to uphold. Right. Now we have to find clients to record at the studio, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So, I mean, that just gave us that much more of a push and, and caused us to be that much more serious in the music industry. Yeah. You still have that studio? No, no, we sold it. We okay. sold it. Now I have a studio in my home. Oh, there you go. So, um, so yeah, now uh, I'm either recording at multiple different studios or I'm recording in my studio. Okay, nice man. Mm -hmm. So when's the uh, next album coming out? Next album, I'm working on it right now. I was gonna say as we speak, but I'm right here with you. <laughs> so uh, this year, I don't have a date yet. I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of uh, personal things that I have to get done first and then we'll move on to the album and the promotion and everything else. So stay tuned. There we go. Now let's uh, pivot a little bit. Where are we right now in terms of office and the business? We are at my office. Uh, this is MIK Transportation. This is a medical transportation company. We also used to have a limo company. And as you see, my phone rings off the hook. I'm ignoring them right now because I'm speaking to you guys. <laughs> um, we have uh, about 30 vans. We provide medical transportation to clients all around Minnesota and we've been around for a very long time and we plan on being around for a hundred years more hopefully my great 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 grandkids can run this business after we're gone that's amazing so what's your role here i am 
the person who puts out all the fires, so to speak, <laughs> as well as you yep. know, running the day to day, uh, manager, supervisor. At the end of the day, though, I feel like more than anything, I'm like a like a therapist to, okay. the, to the clients, to the employees, to the company in general. There's a lot of fires that happen every day, and I gotta be the one to put them out. Yeah. Um, I get it, man. I get it. So it's a lot of a That's lot hilarious. of fun. It's the firefighter. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun. I love I, that. I got no hair because of it. <laughs> Stress. <laughs> All right. So let's pivot again, and we'll come full circle, and you know, we'll dive into each one of these a little bit more. But I want to at least provide the viewers with a you know a macro overview, and then we'll dissect each one a little further. So, uh, hip hop artist uh, got into the rap game. You're also entrepreneur, businessman, running an organization. Talk to me about what you're doing in terms of your activities as an investor. As an investor, um, as of right now, my biggest investment is the limo jet. It's the only one in the world. You can Google that too. You'll be blown away. It's kind of like if you ever seen Soul Plane, it kind of looks something like that. It's a, it's a jet on wheels. Um, and that's no bullshit. It is a what would you call it? A ruby? It's a maroon? It's a, a, a caramel apple red jet on wheels. There we go. It is literally a jet on wheels. It's amazing. So where, where, the, where can they find that? I mean, they can find it on your personal page, right? Yeah, you can find it on my personal page. You can find it on Google, YouTube. It's, it was on Ridiculous Rides. So, I mean, it's got millions of hits. You can't miss yeah. it. It's the only one. So if you search it, you will find it. So tell me about the idea behind that. Honestly, it literally got thrown into my lap. The guy who was building it uh, couldn't afford to continue building it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he approached us and said, I need some investors. And it it just blew my mind seeing this thing. You know, he turned this airplane into a vehicle. It was half done, of yeah. course, but the, the, the idea of it blew me away. And I, I just had to jump on it. I couldn't say no. And, um, now we're here. I mean, did you know him personally, or how I did, did we, okay. we, we 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 were in the limo business, and he was the one who actually stretched the limos out for us. So we mm. would purchase vehicles, gotcha, and and he would cut them in half and stretch them out. Yeah. So when he had this project and he needed some investors, I was just like, "Fuck yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Why not? That's no perfect. no brainer." So how's it doing? Or actually, how long ago was that? That initial you know, seed funding, if you will. Uh, that was about. Three three years ago. Okay. Man, time flies. I feel like I was just seeing that on your story for the first time like I'm, a year and a half ago. I'm telling you, it's That's like nuts. it's like, you know, in a blink of an eye. It's it's yeah, it's been three years, now it's completed. Uh we've done some shows. Uh we've gotten a lot of people interested in like doing videos and stuff like that, but we held back and we kinda kept it in the dark, so to speak, just because um I feel like the more it was out there, the more People value. are going to cop copy it or yeah, what? I, not even copy it because, I mean, it's got millions of hits on YouTube and Facebook. It's got 20 million views. I mean... Are you guys renting this out as a limousine? Or? No, no. Okay. So that that's that's the thing that, that people get misconstrued is people think because it's a limo jet, it's for limousine services. Yep. Our vision was to build a marketing machine mm -hmm. for big companies sure. like coca-cola pepsi red bull things like that this thing wherever it goes everybody's turning their heads everybody's it, it, it blows everybody away so and again i'm sorry i gotta run a business here so i'm <laughs> answering phones putting them on hold it's all right we get it uh there you go it doesn't stop now there's four lines three lines on hold um so my vision was that it's a marketing machine anywhere it goes it draws attention doesn't matter where if it's on the road it's causing traffic at, at two in the morning there's traffic exactly because this thing yep. is something that nobody's ever seen so I figured we pitch it to big companies like that to to do promotional advertising for, for big corporations and do big shows Super Bowls things mm -hmm. like that we we're supposed to be in the Super Bowl last year it didn't happen because the arrangements were figured out too late whatever the case may be but now I feel like because due, due to the fact that it's not getting booked out as much as we thought it would, mm -hmm. we're just putting it up for auction at Mika Auctions, which is one of the biggest auctions in the U.S. Yep, I'm aware. And then after that, 
we got a 49 Suburban that's stretched out that we're, we're going to build up and then possibly do another jet for somebody. Nice, man. So we'll I see. love it. We'll see what I happens. I love it. All right, so there's three balls you're juggling. What's next? What else is on the plate? Uh, I just got into car sales, so I'm selling cars. Um, you're going to have to talk up because this HVAC is kicked on uh, super high, so. Yeah, my bad. No, it's all good. Just just make sure you're speaking up. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'm selling cars now as well as doing everything else that I'm doing, and I want to dive into real estate, commercial real estate. Um any type of real estate there is, I want to get involved because from what I've seen, from the research I've done, the rich get richer from real estate. Every every successful entrepreneur, every successful person in this world, I feel like has some type of investment into real estate. So I figure, why not? I want a piece of the pie too. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit in terms of what strategy you'll be taking from a real estate perspective. Do you foresee that you'll be buying a property low that has some room for improvements and go in, fix it up a little bit, and then flip it? Or are you going to be building and selling? Are you going to buy and hold? Like, what type of strategy do you think? Or so, sure well. so I have I have a few acquaintances who are contractors and things of that nature. So I've already spoken with them about you know purchasing foreclosures and fixing them up. Yep flipping those. Um, I really also want to get involved, like you said before, the, the apartments. Yeah, the multi-units. The multi-unit yeah. apartments, yeah. the duplexes, um, commercial real estate in general, you know, because just seeing this building alone, we own this building and it's very profitable. You know what I mean? Leasing out space, whatever the case may be. I'm the type of person where no matter what industry I'm in, just like the music, I'm not just an artist. I'm also a label, owner, president, whatever. Also this, that, etc. So if I'm going to do something, I'm going to try to do it to my full ability, to, to the best that I can. And I'm not going to, you know, limit myself to just one avenue of that business. I'm going to try to reach out and, and touch every avenue possible. Mm -hmm. I love that, man. I think that's a perfect segue for the last element I want to touch base on, which is the mindset. Because you have to have an extraordinary mindset to be able to not only juggle and manage all of these different moving pieces, but to actually execute on them effectively. What is the what is the secret sauce? You know, if you were to attribute three characteristics that you possess that help you succeed in these areas, what do you think they would be? Um, I'd say three of the biggest things for me. Number one, my children. They drive me. To the best of my abilities, I want to be the best man I can possibly be for them. Uh, number two, struggle. I went through the struggle. I uh, came here as a refugee of war. I've seen all types of things that you can imagine. Uh, Where are you from? Russia, U USSR, when it was the USSR. Um, and number three, drive. I just. I have this drive inside me that I can't even explain to anybody, but I can't sit still. I just can't. I can't be complacent. I can't. You know, when people have the weekends off, they want to hang out. They want to relax. They, they, they just want free time. I'm always thinking of something to do. I'm always brainstorming. Um, I can't sit still. I mean, that, and, and that, that might be other than, you know, the kids in the struggle. I'd say, yeah, drive. Because my drive is what drives me, mm -hmm. you right, know. Right. Um, so yeah, I'd say off the top of my head, those would be the three biggest things that push me to do what I do. I love that, man. I love that. Kids motivating the hell out of you. Get up out of the bed in the morning, yeah. right? Yeah. You got your your past that has you super grounded and humble to understand. Okay, this is essentially the worst of the worst, and I never want to experience that again. I have an opportunity to make the most out of the day today, so I'm going to make the most out of it by putting forth full effort, right? And then exactly. thirdly, um, you said, what did you say? Um, I'm blanking out. Oh, yeah, you, you can't sit still. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't yeah. sit still. And that goes along with my thesis that there's no such thing as a part-time high performer. No, no, it's a full-time thing. Yeah. Even when you're, when I'm sleeping, I'm dreaming business. Right? Exactly, I get it's, it. Man. It's 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 crazy because you know I, even when I want to relax, even when I'm on vacation, even when I'm out of the country, whatever the case may be, 
the, the, the mind's still working, the brain's still working. I'm constantly thinking of something different to do, how to excel in what I'm already doing, how to be the best at this, how to, it, it just, it doesn't stop. And anybody who, who is a serial entrepreneur, anybody who wants to be successful and that's their passion, I feel like we're all the same. We all have those same similarities and those qualities. And that's what pushes us to be great. That's exactly right, man. Well said. You know, having touched base on the three things that drive you, looking at all this shit you're doing, being good shit, what are the biggest challenges? Oh, man. Or learning experiences. You can take that in, in two parts. The, the biggest, I mean, the biggest challenges for me, I'd say, as far as business, biggest challenge is just coming up with the, with the revenue, which isn't even a challenge if, if you're making money. But I mean, as far as the music industry, I could go on for days on that one. That's uh, that's a difficult industry, man. It's a lot of a lot of fake, a lot of snakes, a lot of. It's just that's a very difficult industry to be successful in, and to even to even be honest with 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 people or yourself. If let me explain myself. So if you look back at any artist there is, everybody's rapped or sung something that they didn't do. You know what I mean? It was fake. Mm -hmm. It wasn't real. I've always been real. Everything I've said in every single song has always been real. And I'm a very honest and blunt person. Real in terms of you're, you're a storyteller, right? You're telling yeah, your I'm story. telling my story. Yeah. And, and even outside of the music, you know, behind the scenes, I'm a very honest person. I don't like kissing anyone's ass. I don't like the, the fake, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm very honest. And it, and it seems like in, in that industry, you have to be, you have to fake it to make it. That they, That's what they say. And they say that in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I just can't fake it. I'd rather just make it. Yeah. You know, if that makes yeah, sense. It's called integrity. Yeah. Right. You know, and I was in the military. So, I mean, integrity, honor, respect is huge for me. Good for you. That's, I mean, I, I, when it comes to core values, that's something that I, I put a lot of emphasis in is just integrity. You know, a lot of people think that whether it's money, it, it doesn't matter how you make it, just make it. I, you know, I think there has to be something honorable about what you do on a day to day, something that you're proud of. And you're going into an industry where there might not be as much honor amongst the individuals playing the game, right. but it takes a lot of courage and a lot of self-awareness and of course self-esteem to be able to go into that playground and say you know what i'm gonna do me right you know the kids can go play on that side of the playground i'm gonna be over here building my own fucking castle right exactly i love that man yes sir i love it what else has been a challenge for you as you you know juggle all these different entrepreneurial endeavors and passion projects uh i mean the biggest the biggest challenge would be you know weighing everything out as far as being able to successfully run all these projects and all these businesses in the manner that it should be ran mm -hmm. and then balancing out my personal life with my children etc etc mm -hmm. it becomes very hard um, <clears throat> when you're working 12 hours a day you leave before the sun rises and you come back when it's dark out the kids are sleeping when you leave the kids are sleeping when you get home that's the biggest challenge and then being away on tour not being able to see your family and things like that but it's crazy how that works, you know, you you um, you sacrifice all this, but at the end of the day, it's all for the for the kids. It's mm -hmm. all for the future, you know, right. and just got to keep pushing, man. Keep trucking. And you're, you, you are your, your biggest enemy. You know, you are your worst enemy. You are your, your biggest uh, critic, things like that. You got to just stay positive at the end of the day. It doesn't matter what challenges come your way. Positivity is key. Law of attraction. What are your thoughts on the phrase work-life balance? I feel like it's it's misplaced a little bit as far as work-life balance. Um, I think life should be first. This little girl is snoring away. Yeah, I got a little puppy here. It's daddy, daddy daycare. Um, yeah, talking, work, talking about work-life balance here. Work-life balance. Little there's, daddy right here. there's another kid of mine. I got I got four <laughs> total, two sons and two dogs. Um, 
But yeah, work-life balance. I, I would say balance or life, life should come first, then balance and then work. Because at the end of the day, uh, I put work first before and that didn't work out too well for me. So now I'm putting life first. I appreciate life. I appreciate every day I wake up. Every day is a blessing. Every day above ground is a good day. And uh, like they say, carpe diem, you know? So, so I appreciate life. I try to balance everything accordingly and I work my ass off. So I wouldn't say work comes last, but life and balance is very important. Love it, man. I love it. If you were to give advice to someone who is an aspiring entrepreneur, what are some things you would suggest to them? Keep pushing, don't give up. Um, strive for greatness, don't accept no for an answer. Um, be the best you can be in whatever field you're in. And just, just go hard, man, go hard in the paint. There you go, there you go. I love that, man. Would you say the same exact things to your kids or what do you? 100%, yeah. 100%. I, I push my kids to be the best <clears throat> at what they do. Whatever they decide, I support them fully. And if you're gonna do something, do it right. Do it at the best of your abilities because there's no point of half-assing anything. Otherwise, what's the point of doing it? That's right. Do you, when you look 10, 20, 30 years down the road, do you foresee when your son's taking over a business or some of the businesses, is that what you hope for yeah. or, yeah? I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that's what I'm hoping for. I I hope that they're happy. My number one thing is that they're happy and healthy. It's perfect. Um, whether they decide to run the business or not is completely up to them. But at the end of the day, as long as they're happy and healthy, that's all that matters to me. So let's say when they turn, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 years old and say, you know, dad, I wanna, I wanna be involved in the businesses. How would you go about integrating you know integrating them into the businesses or would you say you know what you're too young wait go to school get your business or would you throw them into the deep end and, and no i i think i mean i think getting thrown in the deep end is the best option because you're gonna have to you have no option but to swim you gotta yeah. learn to swim somehow mm -hmm. you know uh obviously i say focus on school but in the meantime with you know if you got extra time let's let's go to the office let's check this program out let's see how this works let me explain how the business works mm -hmm. and i've i'm very involved in my kids life so they've already been here many times they've seen multiple businesses of mine they've been to my studio um the only thing that i haven't brought them to was a show okay which is which is on my to-do list um but yeah, man, I would, I would, I would throw them in the deep end and and, and maybe throw them some floaties or something. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that, man. What are you doing, little stinker? She loves attention, man. She's a little princess. That's funny. Um, all right, let's flip the script a little bit. Ask me a question. What's on your mind? Well, like we said, we've known each other for a very long time. Yep. We've, uh, <sighs> Yeah, we went to middle school together, high school together. Yeah, grew up in the same neighborhood. Grew up in the same neighborhood. Yeah. Um, I've seen you. I've seen you succeed in many things, and and I'm I'm super proud of you. I'm super that, super like happy us. for you. Um, right now, what is one of your biggest goals? <sighs> so, how do I want to take that? I mean, as you know, I'm, I'm similar to you in terms of being able to juggle a lot of different balls. And so my goal, one goal that comes to mind is being able to scale fit to get. It's a super important project to me because um, in my roadmap, I want to move out of Minnesota, at least temporarily, see how life is somewhere else. But for me, before I do so, I want to be able to have an impact in Minnesota. And so part of that, equation is one of the variables is scaling fit to give so the more i sell fit you know these fit to give bottles the more i can donate to charities here in minnesota and then another element of that is um, being able to maximize my opportunities in minnesota by having conversations with people like you in the minnesota area that are doing super extraordinary things so i can make those convers have those conversations make those relationships and um 
that's I would say that's like my near term goals. Um, then I have a thousand other mid term and long term right. goals. Right. But right off the top of my head, it, it's definitely just kind of scaling um, the business and um, my relationships in Minnesota. There you go, man. So, yeah, man. I wish you all the best. We're here I to support you, brother. Bro. I appreciate that. Anything else you want to chat about? Anything else you want to highlight? I mean, I think we covered most of it for the most part. You got anything else you want to talk about? You know, I think, you know, as I'm getting better and better at having these conversations, I'm starting to recognize when I need to have a part two and a part three. And I think this is one of those instances because we kind of skimmed over, you know, this business, MIK. We skipped, not skipped over, but just, you know, scratch the surface. I think each one of those five buckets that we touched on, we could go into a different... Um, oh yeah, we could talk for hours, man. And, and I think those will have a lot of value, but I think for now we'll just keep it high level. But um, especially for a lot of the entrepreneurs that follow me and you um, going into your, your business strategies and mindset around that would be super valuable. And then secondly, for all those aspiring artists, you know, going into that and your career around that deeply, I think there's value there. So. Um, just for the sake of time and the 109 calls you have to return, we'll, we'll cut it short now. Um, but with that said, I definitely think there should be a, a part two, part three. Let's do you it. You know what I mean? Let's do so, it. So, Dima, oh, love it, bro. Love you too. Love Super you proud too, of you. Um, it's been a real pleasure to connect with you after all this time. You know, Likewise, love bro. seeing you doing big things, my man. Thank you, brother. You too, man. Cool. One last time, tell everyone where they can find you. Dima Cash, just Google me, D-I-M-A-K-A-S-H. Round two coming soon. That's exactly right. All right, guys, we're out of here.